This is my Casting Corporation. Inspired by the past. Crucifixion of a philosopher of liberation. Um, <clears throat> what am I talking about? Uh, I will begin with salutations and a certain introduction. Um, I deposit my salutations to the, the Joshua Nkoma Foundation in South Africa for affording me the opportunity to reflect on a great African statesman. Not Zimbabwe uh, I want to submit my intention to reflect on the values and not the person of Joshua Mbo. It is only a philosophical dilemma that personal values cannot be reflected upon without reference to the person that bears those values. I want to confess my personal vulnerability to the strong temptation to be carried away by my enchantment with the the heroism of Joshua Paul. But I want to promise that I will not allow my enchantment to overtake candid uh, observation. I want to confess my deep suspicion of heroes. Um, in their religious sense or political goals. Why? Because if there were no heroes in politics, especially, there would be no traitors. Once a strategy is a hero, the process of betraying that study has begun. I want to declare my belief that to liberate Como, which is the theme of this commemorative event, we must recover the name and the image of Joshua Como from myths and fictions. Myths and fictions created both by his diehard supporters and so on. We want to locate the Joshua Mpomo of actuality, away from folk tales, legends, myths, propaganda, and other imaginations. Right, um, going back to the title of my talk, Joshua on the Cross, the crucifixion of a philosopher of liberation. But who fundamentally are the philosophers of liberation? Because if there is a philosopher of liberation, Joshua Nkomo could not have been the first one or the last one. I'm trying to map out the characteristics of these so-called philosophers of liberation. Those of you that have appetite for studying and reading, um, I can refer you to Gustavo Guitares on uh, liberation theology, Paulo Freire on humanism, and Rick Dussel on uh, the philosophers of liberation. These are scholars that have written on liberation thinking, liberation philosophy. So there's a type of thinkers that are called liberation philosophers. I will try and talk about them. Because they are great individuals, they have got great strengths, and they are good people. I am not going to concentrate on their greatness. Because it is obvious. I will talk about some of their limitations, which we need to, to understand. What uh, Dr. Tarnov was saying, that what are we here to do? Are we here to praise Joshua Komo? Are we here to criticize Joshua Komo? I think we are here to understand Joshua Komo and how we can best on his philosophy and his legacy pick up pieces of the future by looking at uh, the past. Like I said before, this kind of philosopher called the philosopher of liberation is a great individual. These are great and rare human beings who love liberation and fear domination. Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambo, Samora Machele, a bit. Samora Machele was more of a soldier. <coughs> And many others, they will come as I go down. These are great and rare human beings who love liberation and fear and domination. What we are talking about, uh, Dr. Andrew, that 
Ngomo enchanted people. Some of the people don't know why they were enchanted by Ngomo. That's one quality. Greatness. Just being great. Because their greatness is obvious, I said, I intend to talk only about their weaknesses and limitations. They are great humanists, <coughs> so they very easily forget that there are animals among humans, especially in politics. Because these individuals are great, they forget that there are other people who are not great, who are animals in politics, especially. Trusting their enemies more than their friends. They take advice from enemies sometimes. Joshua Gomo had friends, Zapu had friends, Zipra had friends, Cuba, Russia, um, Angola. But eventually, when it came to making critical decisions, Joshua Gomo listened to Nyerere, the British and the Americans. Yet he says here that Nyerere had personally condemned for me and did not want me in power. And Nyerere, as a, a member of the frontline states, told Carrington that if Robert Mugabe loses the election in 1980, we are going back to war. After Mugabe was met to win, Nyerere sent a messenger to Carrington to say, thank you very much for permitting Mugabe to win, but why did you make him win so much? Nyerere kicked Ngomo out of Tanzania twice. He said, get away of here, you are not a leader, you are not supposed to be here. Anymore. Unceremoniously. But when it came to making a critical decision that I'll come to, Joshua Ngomo listened to Nyerere. These great humanists are like that. So they easily forget that they are animals among humans, especially in politics, trusting their enemies more than their friends. And eventually taking advice from enemies who got bad and evil designs. They fear war and death, therefore prefer dialogue to armed struggle. They frequently disarm their soldiers and prevent rather than enable military victory. You can talk about South Africa here. Um, there's a camp where Chris Honey and other military hardliners like Spiu and Yanda wanted to push those Russian tanks into this province and run over the Boers in a military victory. <clears throat> but there were doves led by Oliver Tambo, followed by uh, Tabombek and others who said, let us talk. We don't want in South Africa to be a wasteland. And the talkers, the philosophers of liberation prevailed that is why, at the end of the day, South Africa achieved um, a negotiated settlement, a compromise. That is as a result of a philosophy of liberation that does not believe, that is opposed to military victory, that believes in compromises and concessions. Um, they love life in excess, which makes them frequently vulnerable to being killed especially in war, in politics, where they are killers. Philosophers of liberation, one of their limitations is that they are innocent at best and very naive at the West. Because they mean no harm, because they are not evil, they think everyone is like that. So they very easily get betrayed and undercut by these killers, these monsters, and in this next. They naturally command great following and are listened to without question, even when they are politically wrong, just like cultic leaders. People like uh, Omar Tambo, Kenyatta, Nkrumah, just be listened to because Nkrumah said so, then it's so. If you start questioning that, you're you like, What's happening to you? What are going through? What is it that is going through? <laughs> <laughs> and that. Because of that huge following, they often leave behind many dead supporters, angry followers, and disappointed believers that they failed eventually to protect from animals in politics. You 
follow this leader unquestioningly. When time comes for you to be protected from monsters and animals in politics, this leader has disarmed you, this leader does not believe in the fighting. You are unprotected and then you become food for genocides, those who massacre others, poison others, and kill others in large numbers. Mahatma Gandhi and others. Mahatma Gandhi would tell, uh, I remember reading something where he was advising Winston Churchill when there was a threat of uh, Hitler invading Britain. He said, lie down and let him walk there. Let him take whatever he wants to take. If he wants your house, go out of the house and let him in. If he intends to massacre you, he will massacre you, massacre you but that will be his loss. That's liberation thinking. Sacrificial, messianic, and suicidal. And he also gave some advice to the Czechoslav caves where they were under attack, some parachute to pass them. He said, do a naked protest, embarrass them, uh, go on hunger strike. <laughs> that is the world of liberation thinkers. Those are born. <laughs> 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 if it has to be pound for pound, it must be pound for pound. Because there are snakes and animals in politics. But liberation thinkers are the weakness of thinking otherwise. They are messianic po political figures, sacrificial and selfless, and like religious messiahs, they end up at the cross of crucifixion themselves. If they are not crucified physically, <clears throat> They are crucified symbolically. They get humiliated, punished by these animals and snakes and sorcerers that I'm talking about. They are great moralists who are afraid of the scheming and the cunning that real politics demands, which makes them failed politicians. They don't garner any political victories. They always come second. So they don't scheme. They are not cunning. They are embarrassed of plotting and all that. They are dreamers and visionaries that see utopia even when there is dystopia. They fantasize instead of strategizing. Hi, English. They dream. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about weaknesses of the philosophers of um, liberation. <laughs> They are highly religious and spiritual figures. Because of their fear of him and love for salvation, they take the advice of religious and traditional leaders seriously, like gospel. Another, that example, Mahatma Gandhi as well. He was rooted in the traditions of the Hindu and other people in India. He was inspired by those traditions. And those are the traditions that he taught Hindu. <coughs> Right, um, just last year, Ikeda uh, uh, Usipo Maduna presented um, a Joshua Mkabongo um, commemorative lecture, which I'm doing here. Uh, what he chose to do was to address the lecture to Mkomo himself, which was a a great methodological approach of um, addressing the ancestor himself instead of commenting in general and all that. So, in his great lecture, Ikeja Omaluma spoke to Komo and reported to Komo what is happening to his dream, what has happened to the country that he fought for, and reported to Komo the tragedies and calamities that have befallen his children. Uh, to continue the conversation from where Maluma left it, I will, together with you, listen to the voice of Nkomo. What did Nkomo say as a philosopher of liberation? And I want to remind us that while I just cataloged what I just presented about the philosophers of liberation with some of their weaknesses, their strengths will need us to have two days 
to talk about them because they are multiple, they are many. So I reflect on the crucifixion of Joshua Mboma as a philosopher of liberation and a great humanist beyond the myths and fictions of his supporters and detractors. If he did Gomu as far as Zimbabwe, what is happening today in Zimbabwe is a crucifixion of Joshua Mboma. What is happening today is a betrayal of his dreams by a genocidal native uh, colonialist regime. I use um, Gomo's own words as an entry point. So I'll get Gomo to talk to us. What did he see? What did he say as a philosopher of liberation? I think there, though, that's where I answer your fundamental question. What are we here to do? Um, I was lucky some years ago that there's a good benefactor, a man called uh, Lindy Carbo, who sent me this copy from the United Kingdom. I had written something and he said, oh, you state that you have not read the original copy. He couriered it from London to Victoria. So what I'm going to say today, most of it comes from here. That's why we are going to pick up the pieces of Joshua Bomo's mind. As a philosopher of liberation, what did he believe in? What did he see? And what did he suggest? I think that helps us to listen uh, to Bomo uh, today. In page three of this book, Joshua Bomo says, from my earliest uh, youth, I tested for freedom which I call liberation. When I became a man, I understood that I could not be free while my country and these people were subject to a government in which they had no say. Unko mochi na esem nani wa yevele e ome li kurule. And wawa wa asumuti. In kurule yon asa yi tole yetu a isi yon kurule yon na abanye vake. Ben a pansu wa kurumen. That's Nkomo speaking about himself. Nobody can deny the sacrifices that Joshua Nkomo made for liberation of Zimbabwe. Or can anyone deny that if Nkomo prevailed to lead Zimbabwe after independence, we would not have suffered tribalism and as much corruption and looting as we witnessed today. If anything, I'm taking a risk to say, Gomo might have grown up to be a benevolent detector, like Kenneth Kaunda, loved by people, loving the people, but still a detector, but trying his best for, for his people. That's another philosopher of liberation, Kenneth Kaunda. Kenneth Kaunda would rather cry than beat up a person or order police to arrest me. <laughs> 2000, I went for a research with my friend. We were pushing this uh, radio program. <coughs> went to, to, to Zambia. And we were very angry now out of that uh, field work. We were feeling hungry. We went to a restaurant called Hungry Lion. But they were not serving beef, they were serving chicken. I remember it's the only restaurant where we sat at the plant and you could hear them slaughtering chickens at the bed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that about that. <laughs> and when I, what I do is say, no, you are eating them fresh, that's why you are keeping them in your presence. <laughs> so after that, we then went to Manda Hill. There's a place called Manda Hill, where it's a big mall in there. You know, you might think you're in South Africa. When then suddenly there was commotion in, in the children's play area. And what is happening was that I thought maybe there was a celebrity. It was Kenneth Kaunda playing with children. No bodyguard, no what. Loved by the people, loving the people, no one had a grudge against him. After all those years in power. That's a philosopher of liberation. No bloodletting, no killing. We can argue, we can contest the politics, we can do what, but no one will wake up dead tomorrow, no one will be abducted and such things. Those are the philosophers of liberation. Um, Nkomo was such, that is my allegation. I've been a, this is another point, point number two. 
uh, page, uh, I think, 17. I have been called Father Zimbabwe. Whether I deserve that title is not for me to say. But by a dozen years in prison and half as many in exile, I believe I've earned the right to speak for freedom, liberation, while it is still in danger. This time not by far of colonial rulers, nor by a secular population who will, I hope, now play their full part as citizens of a new nation, but by former colleagues in the liberation strife. Our war of independence was longer and more cruel than any yet fought in Africa because it was unnecessary. Uko my Afungel Bini didn't want the war. That is why he led Zebra reluctantly. It was an agony for Komo to deploy. Seveza Hamba Bay Bulalaba, Linda Vasina Kurumi. Where are you, Dad? Right, what is Ngomo saying? Should I be called Father Zimbabwe now? I believe this person and I've written it before. And please, if you don't like it, open this page so that I can run out. <laughs> Father Zimbabwe is a political nickname that his enemies gave to Ngomo. While they were busy tribalizing him and reducing him to Father Matebele. There was a time when Joshua Ngomo was Father Zimbabwe, but his enemies made sure that he does not become Father Zimbabwe. Mahamba Betela Bante Mashona Lendu Tiege Lalu Musapotu Mdebe, Sapotani, Abagina Abakulumu Limbe. And those people are mentioned in this um, book. There was a time in 1963 when uh, OAU, OOU at the time organized a uh, conference. And Zapo, under the leadership of Ngom, was invited to make a presentation to other African states. How far is the strike? What is happening? What support do you need? And how can you be assisted? Amazikra Alaba, they remember what I'm talking about. Robert Gabriel Mugabe was the secretary who was supposed to draft the speech that Ngom was supposed to present. Hmm. And preparations were good, brainstorming, which I caucus to write this point, write this point, um, and then they were told that they were going When the conference came, it was this, oh, hi, the last day, everyone was there, they wanted to listen to Komoro, but Mugabe was nowhere to be seen. The speech was not written. And Komoro later led to Leopold Takawira said, no, in front of the OA, you are now elevating the Musumundebe. You should not be the leader. Majority tried policy. And when Ukomo was in the middle of that confusion, <coughs> there was a, a fellow called, um, is it Morton or Norton Maliana? Joseph Musika, who was Ukomo's colleague, was Ukomo when an was not tribalist, realized that Maliana was carrying a a suspicious paper. Well, some poly paper they don't see what are you carrying? Ah, why to all I manifest to your grand plan? Written in black and white that now us as the majority tribe should assume the leadership of this party. Yes. Not this should be the way. So they were reducing this person from Father Zimbabwe to Father so that's why in my analysis I'm saying they were lying to him that your father's Zimbabwe. They were busy organizing tribal and all that. So Komo's enemies had become native colonialists. While second colonialists used racism, they were now using tribalism. Up to today, Zimbabwe has not recovered from that evil which was cultivated by certain politicians because of power and all that. Right. Uh, point number three. This is another statement from uh, Joshua Ngomo. Hardly any family in our country was unaffected by the bloody war that was forced <coughs> upon us. Again, forced upon us. Ngomo was a reluctant commander. He didn't want to go to war. Um, 
But nothing in my life had prepared me for persecution at the hands of a government led by Greek Africans. That's another problem with the philosophy of Greek nations. <coughs> How can you say in 1984 nothing prepared you that these people are going to persecute you? When in 1963 they split from you on tribal grounds and called you Zimbabwe? You forgot all that. How can you say nothing prepared you when 1972-1976 Zebra was slaughtered in Gagao and Morogoro? How can you say you didn't see this coming? That's who they are, these philosophers of liberation. They believe in the holiness of others and that people are going to change for the better. When in politics you read Machiavelli and other political appeals, Machiavelli says, Human beings are either good or bad, but for purposes of politics, assume they are bad and act like they are bad. But here is Bongo in 1984 saying, was against the But in 1963, you are not a majority tribe. Tumuguru, school. Still, nothing prepared me for this crucifixion. So, Komo, like any other philosopher of liberation, was uh, delighted about war. His hesitation irritated him and exposed his soldiers and followers to danger. Everything should have prepared Komo for persecution by his own PF, well from 1963 split. That is on record as a fact that tribalism, hatred, and evil was mobilized to reduce so-called Father Zimbabwe to Father of a certain village, some God of people until the end. Point number four. Uh, in all my dealings with people, this is God speaking, I have entered trustingly and have found out too late when I've been betrayed. My comfort has been to trust in and be trusted by the masses. And true to his word, he acted trustingly with snakes, sorcerers, murderers, and killers. And then the process did not get betrayed personally. He exposed an entire population of Zaku supporters who were both in the belly and Shona and all and exposed former zebra cutters to mass murder and to violence that people have still not recovered from up to today because Unkomo acted trustingly. Even trustingly with snakes. ISR is voting among snakes. Indeed, Unkomo trusted more than he should have, especially looking at the sorcerers that surrounded him. Trusting in the masses and being trusted by them is not enough if the leaders do not protect them from sorcerers. When you lead people politically, you must have the capacity to protect them. That's why Zebra was created. But Nkomo didn't utilize Zebra when it was needed. There's one person, or is it Colonel Dai, who said, if someone gave me an army like Zika, yeah, Peter was there, and this one, eh, Angola, I can march from Cape to Cairo without an obstacle. There was no military machine, military instrument that was as potent as Zika. But there was no command. <laughs> The generals that were there were all told, Oh, I want to do pretty girls. What are you pretty girls? I'm a colonial side of Lanaban. There's no other thing that's not my own. There's nothing to say to Lanaban. Eco only missionary, why you get Louis de Blois, why you get Louis de Blois. I'm a white nigga. Um, we trusted more than he should have and trusted the wrong people at the wrong time, at the wrong moment. 
Equal as a Bibelian, who King David, God's most favorite person, went to war, and when he was told to bring four skins of money to Philistines, he bought two hundred. Because everything is a system. Committee only if. Point number five. Uh, because he knew he was honest, he was so honest in everyone, including tribalists and genocides. Was what he was telling you. Was what he was telling you. Point number five. This was said, it's not in this book now, it's in the funeral speech. So, look out, Masu. Any other general, Jackie Chomas, look out, Kuzana Bafan. He said, Why should men like Luca Masu and Miso Tabem, after being found innocent of any wrongdoing by the highest court in this land, remain detained? When we ask, we get the same answer from the minister as we used to get from this people. That's why I'm saying, is NPF all the way during the liberation struggle, they were preparing for a one-party state. And when they got that after Kukura went, they became a native colonialist regime. They were colonialists except that they were Zimbabweans and that they were black and they were not Sekians. But Kukura did not see that coming when it was clear that it was coming. So Umbuzo General Kukura was not supposed to ask you should have seen it a coming. It is another lesson that Kongo, because of his trust in the goodness of others, led too late and too, to tragic ends. That Zanpia was planning a tribal one party state and genocidal regime after independence. It was clear throughout the liberation struggle. Clear too was that for Zanpia, Zapu had become more the enemy than the colonialist regime. Do you know it that the Kukura went genocide killed ten times more people than the strike against settler colonialism? In people in the way of the Lamana Babu Twani will allow Baba Kukura. And throughout the liberation strike, for his own PF lesson, that the enemy was now Zapu, not to swim, not a loop. But that is also part of liberation. Believe in liberation and do not see that. Point number six. No country can live by slogans. Parsi, down with this Parsi, that. When you are ruling, you should never say Parsi to anyone. That's a philosopher of liberation topic. That is understanding. If Ongomo was allowed to lead Zimbabwe. This is the kind of leadership we were going to get and which we lost. Satolo pass. I will put another to my pass, then I do pass. Pass. That's what Tukum was against. And whenever there's pass, 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 Kutua pass in Wabe, Katuma pass to our pass. I want to tell a pass. You call another fellow of the Euro, but a pass in my pass won't come. We have law and we have poison, we have doctor and we have one. We have to say that we Parents should learn why a child is about to have a one to pass a child in a child. Why are we going to do that? 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 Postmortem is not to go to the table where you come to eat. I'm still a child. A child is not going to match any sense of why I was good years ago. That was our room running in Petalula. So, if this philosophy prevails in Zimbabwe, the country will not be what it is. The past ideology has come. Has become a policy in the country, and even the political opposition have reproduced it. Uh, it is a loss for Zimbabwe that Nkomo, through force and fraud, was not allowed to nationalize such values as they are about. Now, Kuntu Kunjana, Kokelu Kunjana, Kuyeva, Kutu Kuwe, 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 Kuwe,
Nawa wula kukuluzwa wano chowezi zunga ya Nukusumeze ya wabani kukusumeze ya wabani Nenye jileji Kate kabe kazele kaka ya Point number seven Nzo shesha mtwete This is what I'm speaking By Monday the 15th February 1982 The two properties owned by the Trump The only properties on which arms were found, together with properties owned by Zap, and those owned by companies whose members were Zap, including properties owned by me and my family, were confiscated under the Notorious Unlawful Organization Act, which was enacted by secular regimes to suppress liberation organizations. In Zap, we are all its properties, 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 was confiscated. Recently, there was a letter that circulated where Uncle was writing to Nangaka saying, Can we have our properties? Those properties have not been replaced. Mm -hmm. Genocide does not destroy bodies or people, it also displaces and dispossesses them. And it is continuing to happen now. To punish political opponents by dispossessing and displacing them is a genocidal Zambia public that continues today. Descending political activists. And Zambia members themselves have their properties seized. Look at when Zupana Gamal is using for estate and only plot your solar plus. They are using a medical technicality. The Lavata Tela and Masuna to myself, the name of Tatil Plus of the Lavo. How much do you know? This is a serious matter. Point number eight. <coughs> Meanwhile, former Zipra commanders were summoned by the army command. This was after the integration. When the army is under its pride and um, the rotation forces came together, they were now in the barracks. In the response room. Meanwhile, former Zipra commanders were summoned by the army command. At your instruction, this is a letter that um, Joshua Pomo wrote to Robert Uka. Meanwhile, former Zipra commanders were summoned by the army command. At your instruction, for questioning and investigation. This was done, it is said, by the military police and or the CIO. Later, ordinary former Zipra men, irrespective of rank, were also taken for investigation. Information has it that during these investigations, there was a lot of beatings and torture of all types, that a number of these young people were killed and others maimed. These actions were followed by desertions and defections from the National Army, not only by former Zipra combatants, but also by former Zanla combatants. Yeah. In Zipra, it actually is called Semsema Barak's back from National Army, Semsema Tato Vesia Bulao. And some of these people that eventually became dissidents are people who were running away with their lives. Uh, Professor Miles Kent recently wrote a book about Solomon Uchu. He confirms that Zanla itself had 3,000 dissidents of its own. Zanla cutters that were told not to go to assembly points with their guns so that they will assist the PF campaigning for the elections. So the first dissidents were Zanla. Our Zipra, after this, we were able to go to our parents. Now, my Machahati Jarat in a sea, Guma Parat. Besides, who told us I am we? That's what created dissidents. The super zap dissidents that create from all quarter. They are part of the region. Say, I've got such a serum cavity, I'm too many, if you forget to get the amount of dissidents. But he created those dissidents, first and foremost. Am I a super company that will see I over to this man? It's correct that I would live with a betty. Lapana get a scan, I can tell you that. Um, Ubaba was a headmaster. For figure one, by seven, eight, the Kogay just dumped up here. But that much is it. Two Mesaman pens are bought with the Muzu. Ubaba no English must have been this. Ubaba no English must have been this. Was a school,
Why are you going to hold for politics? Put in our own police. And to the Joshua Kabongomo Foundation, yeah, one is such. Point number eleven. It is obvious to me why you decided to form the fifth brigade outside the structure and command of the national army, so that you may use it as a party and tribal brigade for eliminating and liquidating. As you have many times said, those who choose to destroy you are going to crush them. As a matter of fact, when I questioned the formation of the people to get outside the Zimbabwe National Army without consultation, you angrily replied and said, who are you to be consulted? This brigade, you said, has been formed to crush those who try to submit my government. And if you attempt that, they will crush you too. <coughs> this is Mugabe telling you all. And this fifth brigade was planned far early in 1979, before the dissidents existed. So there was a long term and a durable plan to do this. The Kogura County Genocide was not accidental, but was a plan and calculated. The plans and calculations were seen by Pomo long after he had disarmed Zipra and had the power to try by this genocides. The Cubans, Russians, and the Angolans yet warned Kogu, even Chief Kaiser, but all were ignored. Kogu began to take advice from some British and American diplomats and Julius Nyerere, who had extreme contempt, hatred, and fear of Joshua Kogu. Nyerere feared and hated Komo with his soul. And Komo says it more than four times in this book. Whenever I was around, Dunyerere was not comfortable. And Dunyerere did a lot to support each genocide. But he did a Chinese Chinese so he Right. This is Ukomo again. One of the most dreadful and shaming aspects of our independence, which is difficult to defend, is that we have taken methods and men used to suppress oppress, torture, and kill our people, and try to use them to consolidate independence. You cannot take weapons, methods, and people designed to defend colonial fascism and try to use them to defend the people. It is just not possible. Today in Zimbabwe, the same torturers that Smith Smith used against the people are back in business defending a people's government. They must smile to themselves when they are ordered to continue their torture of patriots by an independent government. You know it. Our general rules, Kendall Dyke and many others. You can invite them and pretended that is reconciliation. But he wanted their torture methods and their skills because he now had to deal with Zipra and Zap. And Nokom was asking, I want to school that I will bomb our panic again, seven sevens in our way, and seven continue to be able to get One of the commanders we could have was Kendall Dyke. Uncle Wam, Kami, who do colonize, I want to do the power of Nubanjila. Our strategy is a ground deployment and everything. The same people with Rhodesian security uh, uh, infrastructure were involved. Who came in Woods with Bali, who came in Woods Story, good man. But guys, the way you're treating us in prison now, one of the least observed tragedies of Zimbabwean history is how Zambia and Ngaru became native colonialists. They even took over the Rhodesian security and insecurity national in the name of reconciliation and used it against Gomo and Zap. Gomo, however, should have been the last person to be shocked or surprised by this. Point number 13, second from last. The real victims so far, this climate of fear, are the people themselves. How can the people get on with the vital task of building the nation when all around them they feel this insecurity and fear. At any moment, they know that this missionary of fear and repression may be turned against them. The people of Mreo may not yet have felt the violence of the 
5th Brigade, but they have already heard the stories. In their faces is the fear that one day this party, army may be turned against them. It is certain that some ZAN PF members fear that the 5th Brigade may be turned against ZAN and that it may even turn against its creators. Is this the climate of confident, free, proud and independent people in government? You do not teach young people to be contemptuous of human life and expect them to respect yours. <clears throat> Joshua Nkomo predicted the coup of 2017. Here, he predicted that Fukura Wundi will move to Mashona Land this way. There are many now in Mashona Land that they've been killed with political violence. Some of them that were key perpetrators of the Fukura Wundi genocide. And true to Komo's words, they did not respect Mugabe at the end of his life. And now they want to capture Amatambak. Why are you that? I don't know why Mnangako is obsessed with Amatambak. Komo's liberation philosopher was prophetic. He warned Mugabe about the coup and observed that the other parts of Zimbabwe and as are going to experience political violence in the future. So Mkongo was prophetic and philosophical in his own way. But now, to move to a new time, Bulalo will come down. A pen you are not was what now we are planning. When I get into that, we two move to Dala, Makelwa. So as we can get the same. The philosopher there, you know, as your command, as your general. He was Mkongo being a philosopher and a prophet, not a politician. Yet he should have known that Mkongo wanted him dead. He only ignored all the evidence. Another philosopher of liberation, Kenneth Kaunda, was impressed. Oh, oh. Right, uh, point number 14. Despite the risk I agreed Despite the risk I agreed to talk to Smith face to face in <coughs> absolute secrecy. This was 1970. 1978, 1979. Despite the risk, I agreed to talk to Smith face to face. I am a to In politics, in general, in absolute secrecy, we met in State House, Lusaka, as the guest of Kenneth Kaun. I found Smith a tired man, a battered man. He told me he wanted to surrender power, to hand the whole thing over. I am convinced he knew the game was up, that the time had come to concede defeat. But I could not on my own accept his offer. I had to bring in Robert Nga, <laughs> my colleague, my colleague in the Patriotic Front. It was to the Patriotic Front that power must be surrendered and not Joshua Nkomo was a die. <laughs> It was clear what if that opportunity had been given to Gabe, he was not even going to think about bringing him home. That's why in the open saying this is a philosopher of liberation who believes in good and greatness, honesty and fair play, and as a resilient quality. There is a reason why Smith was handing over power to Ngo. Okay, let me comment on this statement. Here was Komo being a philosopher and a prophet, not a politician. <clears throat> Yet he should have known that Mugabe wanted him dead. He only ignored all the politics. Another philosopher of liberation, Kenneth Kaunda, was impressed by this. And Smith was disgusted by him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Smith was disgusted. <laughs> And all that. Well, the story that is written uh, when they were fighting this liberation struggle, there were many things that were being done traditionally. Uh, I think it's Patrick Gombay who wrote that uh, narrative. Uh, there was this traditional ritualist in Mashona Land who knew Gomo is a leader and all that. In the Uga Gomo, they are not in Mashona Land, not in Matel Land. So, when 
Ubaba lwa senza lwa mkubu wati e Kogule kuzi lapi kuru Nifu kutuwa kwa tala kwa kutuwa kwa kutuwa Kutuwa kwa kutuwa nzima wali kuma wata Kwa sotuwa hayi mseme zupe lilige Umkokele ya melatati shoga kube mwilo shatela Inguzi liani Wali piwifu umtala wati property this might have been way for my head to overpower the robot. And as so um Right, um, the turning point strategy. This was also 1978 1979 when these talks were beginning to be talked about. When um, Usmith had offered the cut around the same time, I think in the space of weeks, Umtala is saying this in this book. I'm not Behind the scenes, a time bomb was ticking away. Nobody but myself and senior Zappo colleagues knew of its nature. A year previously, <laughs> Zappo and Zipla, in the closest secrecy, had decided that the war must be ended. The agony could not be allowed to go on. We had set in motion what we called the zero point strategy for a transformation of the war from guerrilla war to full-scale conflict in which we would match the Smith regime's armor and air cover with armor and air cover of our own. We had requested the Soviets to accelerate the training of our air crews in that country and to make available sophisticated modern aircraft which would strike in equal terms against British and strategic infrastructure. And the Soviets agreed and gave you zipra tanks. Everything you can think of, you see our ballistic missiles now, Vladimir, Asha, now in Ukraine. Oh, my God, that's how we are so, because we can't have a little bit of a problem to come down, convince Uncle Mouti, I beg your pass, I can't see a lot of customers here. Remember that is to do, that's how I try to hold from this law, law count. With all this machinery and the red trained uh, military personnel, <coughs> Komo took, took all those tankers or Abega Pass or Ahenda over to Ama Rutishi and Sutaso Pele, the water scene, Kuluma, and Sutaga in Lega Pass. That's where Kukura only began. What Putin had done at the time, Putin, I think, was a, a KGB a officer. They had given is the a military infrastructure that was going to defeat the Rhodesians. British intelligence picked it. That's why they and other people ran to Kaunda to preempt a zero point strategy. Being a philosopher of liberation, believing in talk, not in war, we are told to put a man and commanders, a generals, there's tools, Saki, watching the Tandy Gas. Um, I want to conclude with my principal allegation. My allegation is that Joshua Gabugo Nyongo Logomo was a great philosopher of liberation, a statesman, and a failed politician, and a tragic soldier. I insist that Gomo was a great man that trusted his enemies more than friends. From him we can learn today what it is to lead with love and sacrifice. And that in fighting for the liberation of Zimbabwe from the genocide and native colonialists that are misruling the country, we must be good politicians and capable soldiers. The great successes and great failures of Joshua Ngomo must be the Bible of our present strategy. <laughs> Born a foot to the two by the regular Pueo Lamta. 
Uh, there was a, a professor in the Democratic Republic of Congo called Ernest Wamba Diawamba. Uh, we are university one day, we are at the AK Waters Bamba. We are going to see a chassel that we are going to see a chassel And there was an outcry, uh, outcry amongst other scholars who are busy conference with the prof. Who was going to teach? Our kids, when we are now carrying an AK-47, what I'm doing is putting books down and fighting because I don't want to allow Africa to fall into the hands of sorcerers. If anyone wants to see a country that has fallen into the hands of the sorcerers, should go to this country that we are talking about. Nyabo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> This is Matilda Nye, Casting Corporation, inspired, inspired, inspired. inspired. inspired.